record. Everyone needs to write okay. It's okay. Okay, so who am I? Here's who I am. I was born in Louisiana, um, right by where Duck Dynasty was filmed, um, at a military base. Um, at six months old, I moved to Michigan because that's where my dad was originally from. My mom's from upstate New York, way up north in New York. Um, I went to this Fremont, Michigan for public school. Um, Fremont, Michigan is a small town, but the school's a lot like Sabino as far as academically and things. Um, it's in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. It's a, it's like a town where all these little towns feed into the in school. Um, they have a huge school. You should look it up. Um, but I, I went there. I participated in cross country basketball and track and field there. Uh, the reason that's important because you got to know I'm a pretty big sports person. I love sports. But when you're five, five nine, 118 pounds in high school, probably not going to play football. You're probably not going to play a lot of like contact sports. And I was really good. I was pretty good at running, so I chose that. Another thing that I like to I like to tell people is when I was in high school, I'm I was super mature. And later in life, I could reflect on that and know I was super mature, mature or immature. And I knew that that was my that that was probably what held me back a lot on some things. Um, I knew I wanted to be a teacher in ninth grade. I didn't know what I wanted to teach, but I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Mr. Bowles, is my uh, history teacher. And I was like, I'm better than that guy because that guy was mean. But he also probably was a genius because he knew I was a good runner. He knew I could go to college and run. Um, so he probably was pushing me competitively, mentally competitively to just be better human beings so that I could have those opportunities later. Um, in cross country and track, I was a all-state runner. I won a state title my senior year in track. Um, I ran 9.09 and 4.11 in the mile, but 9.09 in the two mile. So I I could run a little bit. Um, I graduated. Uh, I was a bench role, bench role player in basketball. I'm not ashamed by that. That means I was like the eighth, ninth person that got to play maybe five minutes a game, maybe here and there. Uh, I didn't really care. I played every game, but not very much. But I'm okay with that because it was one of my – it was a good experience because I went from being really good runner to not like an okay basketball player that made a team that finished second in the state, but – Never really got to play that much, but I learned a lot about the game. I loved the game. I used to, I coached the game for a long time. Um, well, I graduated high school with a three, four, five GPA, which is pretty high. Uh, you would think that'd be a really good grade, but that put me 189 out of 213 kids. So my school is very highly academic school. Um, when I was when I was looking at colleges, I was recruited by Michigan State, Eastern Michigan, Western State, Grand Valley State, and Aquinas College and University of Missouri. Um, because of this whole I wanted to be a teacher, I didn't want to be a professional runner. Um, I never saw running as a competitive lifestyle, like my job for my life. I never really wanted to be a pro athlete. Um, I chose Aquinas. Um, and that was another part of that was because I was super immature and I knew I was super immature. And I felt like being at a small college would help me be more successful in like what I wanted to do after. Um, I majored in hyper and history. Hyper is health, physical education, recreation, and history. I had a double major. Um, I was an All-American cross-country runner. I was a national championship qualifier in track all the time. Um, our, I was on a second place team in the nation two times um, in high school I was in the state championship team twice so you know I was in a competitive frame all the time we were also academic national champs I should have, I should put that on there but I didn't um, following college there's a couple of things that happen um, the first thing you do is you have to student teach if you want to be a teacher student teaching is you don't pay you pay for that you don't get paid so I got my personal training license and I would be a personal trainer and a student teacher during the day, personal trainer at night. And that's how I made money and became a teacher and got my teaching credentials because you have to do student teaching before you can become a certified teacher. Um, when I finished that, because I did that in the spring, 
I was a personal trainer that summer. I got a, I got a job um, as an assistant cross country and track coach at St. Francis University in Joliet, Illinois. Um, I worked there for a year. Um, I, I liked it, but I love it. Um, I felt like I couldn't be a full-time coach because, well, first, being an assistant track and cross-country coach, you're probably making eight grand, I think I made. So I'd have to be a personal trainer at night, and I was just really busy. And I was like, I want a job where I don't have to work nights all the time. Um, so I went into teaching. Um, when I was a teacher, I had – eventually got to be an assistant coach again for Arizona Western for three years while I was still coaching high school. Um, my teaching, I've been teaching, this is my 14th year of teaching. I taught two years of White River. I taught seventh grade social studies. I was a middle school cross country coach and a high school track coach. We finished second in the state. I was a girls head coach. Um, then I went to Duncan. Duncan is a, oh yeah, the White River is on, a, on the res. So it's up north, it's on the res. Um, I'll just say high school is the high school in that district. So that's where I taught, that's where I coached high school track at. Duncan High School. If you guys don't know where Duncan is, that's okay. It's 20 or 30 minutes east of Safford, which Safford is in your guys' region for, but it's 20 or 30 minutes. There's a 90, 92 kids in the high school. When I was there, um, I got to teach basically history, world and American. I taught geometry or geography. Yeah, one more person I let in. Um, I taught geography. I taught weight training. I taught PE, uh, government. I taught everything. Oh, what happened there? Hang on, let me go back. I went backwards. Hang on. Um, I was there for two years. I got to coach var varsity volleyball. I was the head basketball coach and the golf coach. Volleyball, we finished final four twice. Basketball, we were in the lead eight for 1A twice. My two years in golf, I was, we made it to state one year. So had some success in both places with coaching, so I kind of like wanted to do it. Uh, I went to Antelope Union, which is over by Yuma. It's right outside of Yuma. It's like you drive through this little town, you go over the mountain, you get into Yuma. That little town is where Antelope Union is. I was a history teacher for two years and a PE teacher. I coached volleyball, basketball, and track. Had success there. That was a 2A school, so it's like 200 kids. Then I – so all these little places, they had budget issues because enrollment was going up and down, up and down, because there's rural society, Arizona. So enrollment goes up, good things happen. Enrollment goes down, they cut teachers. Me being in – like a new teacher to the school, because I was like two years, two years, four years, they had to cut people from teaching positions. And so I, I got cut in each one of those schools, not because I was a bad teacher, not because of that, just because um, seniority, I had low seniority. So me and my wife at this point in time, we talked about going to a bigger district. And I said, that's what I need to do. So we looked at Phoenix and we looked at Tucson. And because I'm a country kid and I grew up in the country and all these areas are kind of rural areas. Duncan had 500 people. White River's on a res. That's it, rural. And Antelope's outside of Yuma in the country. I really just am not a city person. So we decided that Tucson would be best for us. So I applied and I became the volleyball coach at Palo Verde. And for the last five years, I was at Palo Verde, being a PE teacher, volleyball coach, and a track coach. Um, volleyball made it to state twice. Um, won the region twice at Palo Verde, I think, since – for like the 11th years, the 11 years before that, they never made state. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, now I'm at Sabino and I'm the cross country coach. I'm still going to coach track at Calvary for one more year. I promised some seniors I would. Um, and then probably after this year, I will not be coaching track at Palo Verde. Um, next, other things I do, I like to do video game race. I racing on iRacing.com. I love it. I stream it. I'm on a, t I'm on a team. Uh, we try to like, run leagues and get professional at it. Probably never going to happen, but I'm going to work on it because I, I enjoy it. I also coach club volleyball. I'm not coaching high school volleyball anymore. I'm just going to coach club volleyball. I work for Zona. I, and uh, the other thing I like to do is travel with my wife. I've been in England, uh, France, Germany, Italy, everything. Now my family, I have two stepkids. They're 16 and 15. They go to Saguaro. Um, I don't like to say their names because you might know them because they went to Gridley and they've been around and I don't really, that's their business to tell if they want 
you to know who I am or whatever. I um, also have a four-year-old daughter who has autism, and that's the other reason I don't want to coach high school volleyball is because of the time commitment to high school volleyball. doesn't let me go see her as often as I want or be around her as often as I want. She does have autism, and she has a handful, so my wife does need me home. My wife is originally from Mexico, and I like to go to Mexico, and I go often because of this, and I enjoy it. And I'm probably going to retire there, and that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is, because I want to, we're kind of blowing through this, and I get that. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do breakout groups. I'm going to stop the recording here in a second. In those groups, like I says, practice sharing who you are and what you like to do. Ask questions of those in your breakout group. I will be giving you three to four minutes to do this. Um, the big thing you need to know about your breakout groups is that you're going to make a 90-second video and submit it to fourth grade in a little in a little bit before you leave. So this is kind of your idea of listening to other people talk about themselves. You get comfortable talking to yourself because the one thing that I can tell you right now about teaching online is I talk to you guys. and I see you guys staring at me. It's an awkward, it's kind of an awkward situ situation. You're staring at a computer screen of a guy talking. I'm talking to a computer screen. There's no interaction, no person, inter interpersonal communication, things like that. And you guys don't even get to share it with each other. I mean, yeah, you have your cell phones. You might be on your cell phone. You might be having side conversations on your cell phone. But really what you're doing is, is kind of like just sitting there. So I'm going to put you in group breakout sessions. You're going to practice talking to each other, talk about yourself, talk about I, I don't really care. And then we're going to – I'm going to have you make a video for me to get to know you. Um, I just talked about myself. I want you. I want to know you. I'm near to Sabino. I want to know who you are. If you play sport, maybe I'll come watch you. Um, if you like to skateboard, if you like to do this, I don't. I, I'm not a person that judges. Um, I really just would prefer that I learn as much as I can about each kid I teach, not because I'm nosy or anything like that, but because I generally care about kids I teach and I want to, you know know exactly how things should go. I'm going to pause the recording now. Okay, so I need you guys to go to flipgrid.com or download the, applica the application on your phone. Um, Flipgrid, uh, you can look it up on the app store. Okay, now use your code, which is Sabino OP, or Sabino P3, okay, and that will get you into our class page. If you're having trouble, unmute yourself and just talk. Or if, you, if it's not clear, instructions. Wait, what? Do what I do this happen? on my phone? What? Do I do this on my phone? Or? You can do it on your phone or you can do it on the, on the web. But the phone's easiest because you can do it anywhere. Wait, what, are we, what are we doing? I'm sorry. You're, you're going to go to flipgrid.com or download the Flipgrid app. Oh, okay. Um, and then you're going to put in our class code, which is Sabino P3. All right. Okay. And then when you do that, so you should be on this Flipgrid website right here. It should say enter class code or whatever you're doing. You're making an account, I'm sure. You're going to use your, your TUSD email. Got it? So the best way to protect you and, and your the, information. What's the code again? The code is Sabino P3. I'll go back to the PowerPoint real quick so you can see that. So it should be, but at, each hour has, it's just the difference is the P, what number. Okay, so you guys are Sabino P3, fourth period, fifth period. You got it? Got it? Okay, now when we go to Flipgrid, um, when I log in, it's going to show me my groups. Okay? So this is our class groups. In your group, you'll have, it should, you should have four topics. Okay? 
What I need you to complete today while we're in the Zoom meeting is I need you to complete the Know You video. Okay? Now, for homework, you're so you're going to click on Know You video and then you're going to you're going to do the assignment in there. A lot of people have been clicking on all one of these and doing this assignment in there and I have to manually move the video to the right folder. I need you guys to do the know you know or know you video, okay? Now, for homework, everyone listening, for homework, you're going to do your workout for 8/12/2020. Okay? So how do you find the workout? You go to your Microsoft Teams page right here. Okay? Let me go to your classes team page, okay? To make sure that we're on the same page. Okay, I got the know you video codes and stuff right here. Now the video, now the workout will be in the class notebooks like so, if you follow. And you go to the Zoom, the one, this one that says week one workout homework. As you click it, it will say Wednesday, August 12th, okay? And it's a Flipgrid activity. I'm going to delete this because you don't need this right now. Okay, Flipgrid activity. And it'll tell you the directions. Eight-minute workout, number one. See links for demonstrations. Workout one, do as many rounds as possible. So you're going to do 15 push-ups, 10 squats, uh, 16 flank or plank taps, 20 jumping jacks, rest for 45 seconds, repeat. You're going to do that for eight minutes. Does everyone understand? You're going to record it for eight minutes. This is, this is due by the morning. So you can do that right after we hang up the Zoom meeting. You can do that um, tonight. It just has to be done by the morning. Does everyone understand? Yes? No. Mr. Jones, where is it? Because when it I go to class notebook, it's not working for me. It's okay. not showing me that. So It's showing me like how it's like, welcome to class notebook, something like that. Who's, who's talking? Sorry, it's not showing me who's talking right now. Jaden. Okay, Jaden. Um, yeah. Let's find yours. Where are you? What's your last name? Oh, right here. So this is your notebook, okay? And you got class notes, handouts, quizzes, and things like that. Up on top, so what you're seeing is this. When you get into it, I know what you're seeing. You're seeing this. Correct? Yes. Okay. When you see this arrow right here, that's your navigation panel. You want to open that and then you can find it. Does that make sense? All right. And then what do I click on once I'm there? Once you're here, you're going to find week one workouts. I like it. It's content library and then like. Okay, content um, library will have it too. It should have it. And then it should say week one workouts. No, nah, all I get is using the content. Okay, hang on. Collaboration. Let me move it over there then. I'm just using the collaboration. Uh, um, I got handouts, homework, class notes, and quizzes. And uh, they said ain't nothing there though. There, it should be in there now. All right, here, let me go back. I'll go again. If not, here's here's the other thing you guys can always know is on YouTube, like this video that I'm I'm recording right now will be on YouTube. Okay, so if you get stuck ever, you just go to YouTube and you type in SaberCat PE, and that's the that's where all these YouTube videos are host are housed, okay? So if you ever get stuck, you can always review what we're doing. Okay, but I'm gonna move on really quick. What I need you to do right now is I need you to click on this Know You video, okay? Make sure it says Know You video, and it says create a 90 second video introducing yourselves and your classmates, or to your classmates, sorry. Now, 90 seconds is not a lot of time to, Say who you are, what grade you're on, what you do, what you do for fun, and maybe what you want to do in the future. I don't know. 
it's up to you to make that video. I want to know what you want me to know, but I want to know something about you. I'm new to I'm new to Sabino, and it's important to me to kind of know my students a little bit. It also lets me hear your voice and see your face, so I can put names with faces. Because right now, I only have his names. Does that make sense? So you're going to complete that video. And then the other thing you're going to do is complete this workout video tonight by the morning and post it. Um, like I said, use the Microsoft Teams. If I have to continue to move things around or I have to send you some type of uh, – um, if I have to send you something, it, if you click on welcome, it should be in there. But I have to send you some kind of like – this is the workout. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yes, uh, Ryan, our code is Sabino P3. I'll put it in the, in the message. Um, on mine, I don't get the welcome. Okay, I'll, I'll look at yours. On, I'll, I'll look at yours in a second. Um, anyone got any questions? Yes, I do. Okay. So, on my phone, I'm trying to log in with my um, class email, and it's letting me enter the email, but it's like really slow, and it won't process to where I can complete the sign in. So is it okay if I just log in with my Gmail? Uh, yeah, it, uh, that's up to you, um, Jaden. I'm posting this right now in the post part. I'm posting the workout. Okay. I was gonna say I just got the workout right now. Okay. Well, I just posted it just to make sure everyone's got it. So right now, all I need to do, right now, what I need you to do is do that about me assignment, that 90 second video, post it. Do not get off the Zoom until it's posted, okay? I wanna make sure you post it in the right spot and that you're doing the right thing. Um, I am gonna stop the video, the recording video because I'm gonna, uh, because I don't need this stuff on YouTube. Um, so I'm gonna pause it, I'm gonna stop it right now.